make any vacation plans in October because the Mets will be playing baseball. 888-808-1019. That's right. The Mets are going to the postseason. I like this positive time. That's right, Teak. One off day that actually has to be a fill-in game in the middle of August. A little pit stop. A little pit stop in St. Louis, and they wipe them out 6 nothing. All of a sudden, they're going to the postseason. Well, I've been banging the drum of positivity for months now, and I've been telling all the Mets fans not to make vacation plans in October because this team will be going to the postseason. And after they lost two out of three to the Angels, the no-fun police, of course, they woke up from their nap. They could go back to bed, by the way. <laughs> Everybody was telling me, even Mets fans, Lugi, the season's over. This is it. This is the decline. Here's the other shoe dropping. Same old Mets. We don't deserve nice things. And I told you yesterday, I said the Mets would beat the Cardinals. We march on. This is a playoff team. I believe in them, and you should too. And they took care of business. This team is spunky. This is why we've fallen in love with them. And this is why, Teak, positive Tommy remains positive because this Mets team is a postseason team. Now, all they have to do is go out to the high altitude in Colorado and not fall short against the Colorado Rockies, who are scuffling right now at 41 wins on the season. If they go take care of business, you talk about taking care of business, because this is what postseason teams do post-trade deadline, post-All-Star break. You win the series that you're supposed to win. Right, You beat the bad teams, those teams that have just basically said, I've gotten rid of uh, whatever assets that we've had, we're rebuilding for next year. You can't struggle with those teams. And so if the Mets continue to follow uh, this path where they beat the teams that they're supposed to, by the way, which is what they've been doing for the last two months, they're winning the series and the games that they're supposed to win, then I'll start believing in it. But I think there is a there is a still just like a tad bit of doubt about this Yankee team or this this Met team dominating their way into the postseason. I know what you're saying. You're confident. You believe in this Mets team. It's the positivity taking over maybe some of the rationality. There are good signs, by the way. Jeff McNeil, who nobody's talking about right now, has been mashing it for the last uh, month or so, or two, two and a half weeks or so. The last week, he's hitting over 400. He's not getting the credit that he deserves, but they still have some some ground to gain. Uh, the good thing is that the Phillies sitting atop this division, the NL East, have not won a series in almost a month. Yeah, they, month. They, they've been they've been awful. And Tiki, I'm not saying you know you've been the Grinch in the past. I don't think this I'm is. I'm not being the Grinch. I'm being the realist. Yeah, I don't, Tommy. Think, I don't think this is Grinch, Tiki. But you've come to the right place. You've come to the positive haven here. Positive Tommy welcomes all. And I would say this, Tiki, for the last two months, the Mets have been as good as any team in all of baseball. Fact. Every single time, everybody thinks they're going to let go of the rope. They haven't. Fact. They've been getting good pitching, especially when Francisco Alvarez, in my opinion, the leader of the team, is behind the dish. Fact. The starters have been really good. The lineup is deep. And then, of course, Carlos Mendoza, who I have publicly endorsed in this election year as manager <laughs> of the year. And you saw it yesterday. Mendy, what I love about Mendy, number one, he's in a tough town. This is his first gig as manager. And they got off to a bad start. You had everything going on with Jorge Lopez. You have a lot of the negativity that comes with this fan base. People were not going to the games early on. I know they haven't been drawing very big now, but early on it was basically Evan, Mr. Softy, and Mrs. Met. That was at, it was at City Field. No one was there. So I think this he righted the storm, and I think this team sort of reflects his toughness, his attitude. And yesterday he puts Tyrone Taylor batting second or whatever. He has a big game. He moved Lindor to the leadoff spot. Lindor's been an MVP candidate since then and he dropped Alonzo to fifth so Mendy doesn't go necessarily by the charts and graphs mm -hmm. he goes with his gut and he's got the stones to do things yeah. even when things go a little bad he knows how to like you know make little tinkers to get this team back rolling again yeah you know it's interesting you, you mentioned the the little tinkering that he's done with the lineup you don't really talk about it for whatever reason and you know why I think it's because he doesn't have a like a set in stone reason Right, he's not, not someone who's sitting down with a notepad and charting out the statistics and the analytics and saying, I'm going to make this move. And you know that because he does this in his in-game management. Remember in the Subway series, I, why did you decide to pitch to Aaron Judge? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of a gut. And so We were hoping for the best. <laughs> exactly. I'm hoping for the best. But you know what? It kind of worked out. I think... 
I think Mindy is old school in that in that regard. And so when you look at some of the moves that, that you mentioned that he's that he's done, moving Pete back, moving Tyron Taylor up, uh, s- somehow getting Jeff McNeil back on track, despite the fact that nobody's talking about it. The whole Vientos uh, situation, obviously he got lucky with Alvarez coming back and being healthy, but all the things that he's done, they're not, we're not yelling and screaming about it. It's not loud. It just, you just notice it all of a sudden. Like, oh wait, Tyrone Taylor's betting second? Oh, okay. He's actually been really good right there. And and it's working. And so he's quietly building this resume as one of the best coaches uh, in, in Major League Baseball right now. And now, is he going to win the coach of the I don't I don't know. Is he Does he have a, a, a chance to do so? If they make the postseason and play strong into the postseason, maybe catch the Braves and, hell, the way the Phillies are playing, maybe they even catch the Phillies. I tell you what, if they win the division, he's definitely. Oh, 100%. He's definitely. Yeah, and he certainly deserves more love right now. Teak, I got the sense, too, even with the win yesterday, that there's still fans out there. There's still fans of the Mets, and I'm talking to you out there, that still don't believe, that look towards the weekend and losing a couple games to the Angels. By the way, and I told you this yesterday, and I'll tell you again. All teams lose series to all kinds of teams. The Angels, I think, swept the Padres this year. We see it all the time. It's baseball. It's a long season. For whatever the case may be, the Mets lost that series. It doesn't mean they're done. It doesn't mean the season is over. And it doesn't mean we need to fall down the depths of negativity because this has been a damn good baseball team. They've been a great story. They're fun to root for. They're exciting. And they've given us this awesome team to watch this summer. And that's why early August, I'm not giving up. I think they're going to the postseason, and I will continue to march on. 888-808-1019. Antique, I know, like I said, you're a little bit a little bit a non-believer here. Oh, it's not I'm a non-believer. Yeah, a little I bit just, a non-believer. I it's it to me, they just feel like that team. Because look, as good as they've been, they're still third in the division. You know what I mean? And they're just like the wild card is not guaranteed. So they're they're in this like spot where they've been playing so well, but it still doesn't feel like it's it's foregone that they're going to be playing in the second season. That they, even if it's a wild card, probably going to be the wild card. Uh, who knows, unless the Phillies keep uh, falling the way that they have been. They're likely going to get into the postseason, but I can't say for certain this team is a postseason team. And, and it's and it's nothing to do with how good they're playing. Uh, it's nothing to do about how, how well uh, Mindy has managed or how great Alonzo is or not Alonzo uh, Lindor is mm-hmm. and Alvarez has been like it's, it's not about any of that it's just that until they get there this team doesn't feel like they're they're guaranteed to be there so in my opinion the Mets are as good as the Diamondbacks they're as good as the Padres and I think they're as good as the Braves look this is not a vintage Braves team they're dealing with mm-hmm. injuries Acuna is out Albies is out Freed hasn't been good and he's been hurt so yep. Olsen is having an awful year I know he's heated up a little bit lately but he hasn't been that good so to me all the teams they're competing with St. Louis Pittsburgh the Mets are as good as any of those teams that's why I'm confident with the stuff I've laid out and also their competition and the way baseball is, they let basically everybody in at this point or they open up more opportunities for people. So right. it's given other teams opportunities. So to me, the Mets are as good as any of those teams. So why not the Mets? From what I've seen, from what I've seen from the other teams, that's why I'm confident, positive Tommy, that the Mets will be playing in October. And, and right now they're not even in the wild card. You know, they're game, well, and, they're half game out. and a half out. Right. And then it means nothing because a, a week ago they were a game they were the number one seed number one wild card uh, team and so it it can change quickly Mm -hmm. but you got to take care of business yeah right the angel series it put a little pause and i think some people and and rightfully so because they had no business losing two out of three to the angels yeah but i so that's why this colorado series Mm -hmm. as i was saying before it's so important right you need to to, to handle your business against teams that are significantly inferior. Yeah, you said they're scuffling. They just suck. They're just not very good. I mean, they hit a lot of homers, and we saw that when they were up here yes. at City Field. They just stink. But, Teek, you, you, you said it. They're a game and a half out. The idea that there are people that are negative and thinking the season's over when they're a game and a half out. I don't think it's out. over. I just don't think it's guaranteed that this team is going to make the postseason. Now, do I do I, do I I hope they do? Yes. Do I think they will? Yes. But it's not guaranteed. I think that's the challenge. Um, and so it just it makes this team, this this. This 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 urgency. We talked about it yesterday with Glaber Torres and how we you know we're we're you know chastising him. 
this team has all of that, but they still can't seem to just stamp themselves into that postseason position, despite how good they've played. So, you, so you get what I'm saying, right? As good as they have played, they haven't stamped themselves into a postseason position yet, and so they're 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 can't you can't help but have some doubt. I just think unless that, you're positive, Tommy. Well, of course, positive Tommy is undefeated as well. I just think it's the ebb and flow of the season. If you look around baseball, show me the team that's been consistent all year long. The Yankees haven't been consistent. The Dodgers haven't. The Phillies have been bad. I would have said the Phillies, but but they haven't won a series in a month. So it's been ups and downs and ups and downs. And the Mets are no different. They got off to that awful start. They were obviously dominant in June, the best team in baseball Mm -hmm. in June. And now they've been a little bit over 500 for the last month or so. So they're like every other team in baseball from that aspect. So, yeah, maybe perhaps they haven't stamped their position, but they're basically like every single other team, except they didn't get off to the great start start mm-hmm. that the Yankees did, that the Phillies did. So they got off to the really bad start, and then they got themselves back into it. Right. So I look at it like when they were 10 or 11, you know, under 500, think about if anybody besides Positive Tommy, who said it at Memorial Day weekend, no one else thought they'd be in this position in early August. So my thinking, Teak, is why would people be saying, all right, it's over right. after losing a couple games to the Angels? No, if you say it's over, you're 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 just, you've lost your mind. You're negative. You're just negative. Yeah. Right? You're, you're the exact opposite of you if you're saying it's over because it's not over it's just not guaranteed and so so much has to continue to go right now i gotta tell you we talk we've talked about the lineup a lot and how well that they that they played and you know scoring runs and all if they get pitching like they got from sean Manaya last yesterday, and he's been great and he's been fantastic yes. right if they if they get that then that's when I'll start believing in this team if I get consistency from the from the rotation that's when you start saying Man, they're, they're going to be hard to beat, right? Especially if Edwin Diaz is Edwin Diaz come postseason. Um, the, you know, elite Edwin Diaz. He's good right now. I don't think he's back to this elite form yet. But if if they pitch well, then this team can beat anybody. That's that's the that's the beauty of the team. But they still haven't guaranteed that they're going to be a postseason team yet. As good as they played, as well as they played, they're game and a half out of the wild card. Yeah, and we've seen that now over the last couple years. It's about getting in. It's not 1998 where you got to win 105 games and win the division. doesn't mean anything. You just got to punch your ticket and get hot. So (laughs) from that perspective, that's why I've been banging the drum to get to October. The other part of it, too, is that the Mets need to build a brand. They need to get to October year in and year out Mm -hmm. so they are more attractive for for free agents. I'm just going to throw a name out there. I'm not saying him specifically, but let's just say, I don't know, uh, Juan Soto. So if you want to attract Juan Soto to Queens, the Yankees have money, the Braves have money, the Dodgers have money. So it's not about Steve Cohen's money. Yeah. It's about winning. It's about turning the Mets into a brand and a place and a destination that free agents will want to come to. That's why it is extra important to get to a situation to where this team gets to the postseason. Teak, I'm 38. I'll be 39 this month. Please send me money. I haven't seen them in the playoffs that often. This is not a team that's there year in and year out. They don't go very often. So it's important to get there year in and year out and turn this franchise into that type of team. Right. The last time that it happened, it was it was quick. Yeah. Well, was two years ago. It was like prom night. I mean it was it was quick. Right. right. It was that was that exciting as that moment. And it was it was it was over very quickly. Yeah, the last couple exits have been quick. We all we don't have to rehash every I mean, all the playoff disasters. <laughs> but to me it's about getting there year in and year out. Eight 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 zero eight one zero one nine is the number to call. Loogie and Lightning here, Tiki and Tommy. You <laughs> like that, that one. You I like, like that, that one? Yeah. Loogie, Loogie and Lightning, Tommy and Tiki here. <laughs> I think the Mets are going to October. They will be playing baseball. Tiki is on board, but he needs a little bit. We're going to help prop Tiki up here, and we're going to give some positive energy for Tiki throughout the day. I want to hear what you guys have to say. We both do here on the fan 888 808 1019. Let's go to Al in Queens. What's up, Al? Hey, positive Tommy. Loogie. <laughs> we got it. Can we just, can we retire it? What do we say? Can we just do away with it? What do you oh want to retire? God, what, what part of my shtick do you want to retire? Loogie. That's never going um, away. How about, how about the whole thing? Can we retire the entire shtick? No. Here's why. You called up and reacted to it. <laughs> That's why it's not getting retired. Yeah, but. Uh, it, sit, it, sit down. It, I'll explain the business it, to you. I Kate. find it irritating and like talk like. Putting nails on chalk. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Do you want to get to your point uh, while we're at it, or you just want to yeah. mock my voice? Both? Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. I, I really enjoy the show, Tom, when you're on. Um, 
also when you're not. You have a course. funny. But, you, have, uh, you have a funny uh, way of showing it out. <laughs> you sound like my wife here. You sound like Aaron Rodgers. You're very hey, passive. You know they say, Al, this isn't true, but they say mockery is the greatest form of flattery, right? I think it's something like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, yeah, I got. Yeah, I got. Right, but no, up, I appreciate it. So. I think uh, Tommy is completely wrong on the Mets, actually, because there's no way, based on the roster, who they have on the team, also who the coach is, that this team can make the playoffs, hmm. in my opinion. How so? When you, have, when you have Pete Alonso not performing well. Why did you start with Pete? Why play? did you start with Pete? That's funny that you did that. Because now Pete Alonso's, because everybody used to hate on Lindor. Everybody, yeah. We used to take 100 calls about Francisco Lindor and all the money he makes. Be, now Pete Alonso's lost, the guy be, everybody hates. Right. Al, are you a Mets fan? He'll, he'll be. Yes, I'm a Mets fan. So you He'll are be lucky a Mets fan. If he makes 30, Mets fan. Yep. He'll be lucky if he hits 30 home runs. No, I mean, you're not wrong. He'll hit 30 home runs. I believe but. he'll hit 30 home runs. And he's going to set a career high in oh, doubles. No. What is he I, at? What is he at now? 18? He's, he's, no, he's in the I just think 20. they're, I don't know. I just think they're a little yeah, streaky. Right. The pitching's, pitching's a little weak, and they're just not going to make the playoffs. And I'm a Mets fan. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I'm no, you, sound, you sound like one, Al. But the point is, is that the has been good. I think it's been really good over the last couple months. Yeah, well, it's been... <laughs> appreciate right, you, I appreciate you getting it's, that look, gimmick it's, over. It's been good, but not nearly consistent enough. That's the problem. Like, that start that we were at, the game we were at with, with Seve, Seve. Yeah, he gave up a lot of runs to the so Twins. so discouraging. And now it's like, Seve's on the mountain tonight, right? So he's got a lot so to uh, discouraging. answer for. I mean, for Mania's been good. Jose Quintana, I mean, I guess, okay, right? Yeah, uh, David, yeah, Quintana's David, been good, for David sure. David Peterson, he'll give you some good starts But he there, is but, what he is, but the Peterson. Question, so my point is, who are you actually trusting? I, I mean, trust... I thought it was Seve, but, after, I mean, we saw it live, and it was just kind of like, dude, this is ugly. You're asking me starting rotation-wise starting or just rotation overall? Starting rotation to get to push you into the postseason, and then once you get there, to do something. I, Sean Manaya was phenomenal. Manaya, Seve, I, I trust for sure. And Quintana, I trust them. I do. I do. These are good major league pitchers. These are not guys that you're just going to get off a scrap heap. These are good major league pitchers. And believe it or not, I do trust the bullpen. Budo has been unbelievable. I still think Diaz will get back to the form that right. we saw where he was an elite closer. And the depth of this lineup, to me, this is one of the best lineups in all of baseball. So they have enough to get there and go on a run. He brought up Pete Alonso. I think that was, besides besmirching me, he just wanted to bash Pete Alonso. Guys, the Pete Alonso stuff, the Pete Alonso hate, that's a story for another day. The contract stuff, he's not hitting home runs, he's not doing this. The Mets won a baseball game. The Mets are trying to get into October. Pete Alonso is going to be a part of that. And I believe Pete Alonso will help them get there. This idea of going to battle now with Pete Alonso is stupid. It's a fight for another day. It's just not what we should be talking about right now and focusing on we should be focusing on where this team is and how they are going to get to october let's see if we can get a little bit more positivity here frank is in tom's river what's up frankie hello loogie hello tiki what's Thanks up for taking my call what's up frank well, i'll tell you uh loogie it's spun around babe the mets are 10 and 7 in the second half the bullpen era is under three can you if you can say on september 3rd the Mets bullpen, the ERA bullpen for the second half was under three. Yeah. It's not, are they going to the playoffs? <laughs> Who are they playing? And let's get fired right. up. Right. How, how quickly can they can they win a series, right? Yep. That's what it comes down to for those that are yeah, believing. Listen, if, you're, if your bullpen, if their ERA is under three, you're in every game. I mean, think about it. They've won games in the second half, three to three to two nothing, one nothing. You don't do that without a bullpen. Yeah, and no, you're right. Bullpen, you're, right, they're hanging on. Is not the MVP right, the Frank, to your point, they're hanging on to these games, whereas earlier in the season, it was guaranteed that they were losing them. Guaranteed that they were losing. And now Budo is coming up big. Oh, he's the, been brilliant. The firm of Morgan and Morgan. <laughs> yeah, Frank, you're right. And obviously, what, it had been like a month since they lost the series? This has been a really good baseball team. Obviously, the beginning of the year was a disaster, a train wreck, whatever word you want to use. It was awful. I remember more Memorial Day weekend, and Steve Cohen sent that tweet out about how bad things are going, and everything looked lost. Since then, this has been a good team. They beat the Yankees for nothing, and I will talk about that forever. I know that, but they beat the Yankees for nothing. They were the best team in baseball in June. Every single time it looks like, all right, here we go, shoe's going to drop. They've answered it. They have a deep lineup. I believe they have a manager of the year candidate. I like the rotation, and Frank brought it up, and he came with numbers. The bullpen has been better. 
which was their biggest weakness. Mm. If this bullpen wasn't historically bad to start the year, they never would have even been in the hole to start off with because of how many games they blew. So we'd be say, we'd be talking about the division right now because they would have won those games or at least won a portion yeah. of those games. Well, I got to tell you, the division feels like it's kind of in play. I'm just saying. The Phillies can't figure anything they out right now. They cannot win. And now yeah. they have the Dodgers. Yeah. Right? They could get swept by the Dodgers and then bring themselves even, what are they, seven games now? If they get swept by the Dodgers, the Mets take care of business. By the end of this week, the Mets could be four games out of the division. Think about that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why I don't even want to – we've talked about the wild card spot and we've talked about which wild card. I don't want to even set a bar or a ceiling. To me, dream big. Whatever you want to do. That's what life's – that's why we watch sports. Mm. We watch sports for hope. When you hear sports fans all the time. I hope, I hope, I hope. You can hope. You can think the vision doesn't mean. By the way, there are no mushes. There are no jinx. The boogeyman does not exist. It doesn't <laughs> matter what I say or Tiki or Sal or BT or the guy or Boomer Geo. Anybody, whatever we say is our opinion. That doesn't mush or jinx anybody. So here, I'm sitting here telling you they're going to be playing baseball in October. It's because I believe it, and I want everybody out there to believe it, so we can change the overall feeling of this fan base. Because I'm sick of the negativity that surrounds it. I'm tired of it. It's 38 years. It's time to move on. We don't have the Wilpons anymore shopping on the clearance rack. Steve Cohen owns this team. We were all excited when he bought the team. So let's remain excited about it, right? That's that's the point of the positivity. All right. 888-808-1019 is the number to call. Evan and Tiki here, but today it is Lugie and Lightning, Tiki and Tommy on the fan. I kind of like that. I, I do too, by the way. You know, I came up with it myself. Uh, uh, we'll it take, just flows. It does. And you brought it up the other day where Tiki is known by Tiki, and you gave me this nice compliment the other day. You're like, Lug, you're starting to be known as one name because mm-hmm. one of the caller who's a Yankee fan, his daughter, his nine-year-old daughter, runs around the house going, Lugie! I was like, start selling some T-shirts here. Get some money out of that. I've been making the suggestion to management. Uh, Lucky. Hopefully they're listening. Uh, So, yeah, so I like the nickname. But, yeah, we're going to take your calls on the Mets. We will get into the Knicks have a new captain, and we will discuss that in a little bit. We will get into Giants training camp with the Lions. It's been feisty. There are more fights. Malik Neighbors continues to be excellent. (laughs) Cinco to Fivo coming up at 5 o'clock. We have a lot to do here today on The Fan. And, of course, your phone calls at 888-808-1019. 